welcome back to UE5 BP Guru and welcome to the first ever Ringmon devlog. Uh, I hope to be able to complete one of these uh, monthly to sort of show you any of the new updates that are being added to the game. Um, but firstly, what is Ringmon? I'm sure a lot of people who are new to my channel and to this video are probably wondering this question. For you veteran subscribers, you'll know that this is our um, sort of Pokemon style or Temtem style game. So Ringmon as a whole is exactly that. It's an MMO capture creature video game that is focused on you traveling the world of Thera with your friends exploring the different regions, uh, competing in the guild challenges and uncovering the dark secrets that trouble the land. Over the next few months, I hope to be uh, going into each one of these subjects in a bit more depth. But for today's devlog, I just wanted to discuss more about my sort of hopes for Ringmon going forward. Firstly, I intend to have all of the usual sort of game mechanics um, of these sort of creature capture games. This includes battling, training, evolving, breeding, hatching, using items, um, all those sort of things that you find in a, sort of like a traditional creature capture game. Uh, and of course, I hope to have all these aspects um, also go into the sort of MMO standpoint um, with next no areas sort of off limits to you and the, the partners you're traveling with uh, around the regions. Um, I'm also exploring the ability to form clans with your friends and have the ability to set up your own guilds for players to challenge uh, in exchange for sort of in-game currency uh, and any money you earn for your guild will be used to obviously improve the look of your guild and sort of you know make it bigger uh, add more players into it and things like that uh, so make sure uh, you use the best creatures available to your guild members so that you you know you win those battles that kind of arise um, when you're not building your guild from the ground up you will be exploring the lands of Thera. Uh, obviously, each region will be based off different real-world countries. So the first that will be introduced to the game, so Region 1, will be the UK. Uh, and I would also like to be able to include a sub-region uh, as well on release, which will be Iceland. Uh, all of the creatures for those regions have already been planned out, and they are slowly but surely being modelled and put into the game. Um, the only thing missing at the moment is animation and sort of particle effects. Uh, so, but each region will have uh, its own native creatures, of course, for you to collect, train, and battle. Um, the first region will have 120 with an extra 40 for the sub-region. So on release, on the official release, I hope to at least be able to bring 160 to the game um, and more for each region that's added. Um, now, I don't want to take too much time sort of waffling on about the game and what I want to add to the game, um, but um, I want to sort of show off the sort of few first areas that I, I can. Um, now, in front of us, uh, as I've been sort of talking away, we have Corn Wallington. Now, this is the starter area for Region 1. Um, as you can see, it's not finished. Um, there's we, We're about eight months into development, and from this point, we have a lab in the background, we have our exterior of the houses, and we have the sort of two areas where you will buy and heal and things like that and there is a couple more shops to go in here um, down the line uh, but the general layout is done um, we've I'm pretty happy with the layout and sort of the flow of this first sort of town uh, as you can see there's lots of sort of placeholder assets and of course the insides aren't done yet uh, but once those have been done and finished and the insides are all set up as well, uh, I hope to be able to start adding in the first sort of story elements over the next couple of months. Um, and the second area I want to show you in today's devlog is um, our region, uh, our route uh, one and two. So route two is split a bit like the original um, red and blue games um, they are split so this is actually technically route 2 here and on the other side of this whatever this is I'll show that off in a, in a future devlog um, there is obviously the second half of route 2 and this here is route 1 um, and in very similar styles to all other creature capture games you can only catch a few on those first two regions uh, different types of creatures um, but yeah uh, I have shown off these in various sort of 
uh, forums and, and Facebook pages and things, the first few creatures you can show on here. So in a moment, we'll go and have a look at that. But uh, for now, this is route one slash two. Um, a very short route. It's just to get you into the sort of swing of things. There will be some trainers um, sort of dotted around here and there uh, for you to battle as well. Um, going back to it, obviously, because we don't have the um, the lab interior set up yet the starters can be picked up from here uh, which I will show you in a moment um, but yeah I, I'm pretty happy with kind of how the flow of the first town and route have gone um, there is obviously lots of little details to be added in here and there and obviously NPCs to make it feel like it's kind of come alive the beach will have a few different NPCs as well um, and of course, when I get around to it, I would like to add in fishing and of course, surfing. So those will be, I need to add in a barrier around here basically and you'll be able to explore out here as well when the time comes. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, you guys can let me know what you think of these very early sort of uh, sections of the area. Um, let me know if you like the layout or if you think it should be changed in any way or if more stuff needs to be added or taken away and things like that. But um, this is kind of where we're at after sort of about eight months. Um, but most of that eight months has been taking up working on the actual game mechanics. And there's still lots to be done on that side of things too. So let's click the play button and jump on into the game. Now I'm going to run this in single player for now because just because it runs smoother. Um, but it is all fully working in multiplayer currently as well. So uh, let's have a look at what we can do so let's bring up the window so this is the game we have a game hud we have our in-game money and we have a few menu options up here currently so let's go and grab ourselves a creature now you'll see that this is all very early sort of setups obviously you know we've got a very basic window uh, and a yes no box but again all of this is subject to change due to um, design changes but for now, we have everything that we need. So we have our party creature at the top there. And we can bring down a menu here that shows us a little bit more information about our creatures. We do have a move select, so we can swap in and out moves. So you're not kind of constrained into the four that you choose your creature to have. So for example, I can even take out moves now, even though I only have three. So if I was like, I really don't want tail wag, I can take tail wag out if I want to, but I can put it back in as well. Uh, if it will let me, there we go. Uh, and we can obviously, of course, move him into other slots if we need to. Um, there we go. Um, this will have rendered targets in as well into these little squares. So eventually you will see um, your creatures as you select them. Uh, of course, we have our ring decks up and running so that you can now go out into the world already and start filling up your ring decks with all the creatures you come across on your journey. Of course, we still need to add in the little bit of detail from the ring decks so things like its entry information um, and sort of all the other generic information like heights and weights and um, index numbers and things like that need to go in here as well. So that's all set up though. It's just obviously this little bit here that needs to be done, but that's the easy part um, when it comes down to it. And of course in the party, the same thing over here. We also need to add in a few little bits of information, like if it's, uh, if it's a shiny or um, all that sort of other stuff you need to add in. Um, but and we also I also want to add in a little bit of stat information here as well. So you can see it's uh, IVs and EVs and things like that as well. So a few little bits to be done on that side of things, um, but nothing that actually is too tasking. It's mainly just actually getting around to doing it. Um, but other than that, it is working. I've set this up so it's more um, user friendly with an MMO. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be opening up windows and it taking up the whole screen and then you not being able to see sort of the action going on around you. I always think it's easier just to have it so that you can still see the real world going on around you. Um, so obviously you can see you've still got open space to sort of see who's running by and things like that. Um, of course, we will be able to save the game uh, to a server. So there will be no manipulating in this game. It will all be held onto uh, a server side so that no one can manipulate the data. Uh, there will be a bag set up so that you, it lists all your inventory and you will be able to store battle slots and capture slots for when you're in a wild or trainer uh, battle. 
so that you can um, utilize for it, it basically I, I wanted to up this the um, I wanted to up the strategy factor by making you only have four battle items uh, and also four capture slots in any game so you you can only so is you have to be more strategic on what you take into a fight uh, so if you know you're going to take on a fire guild you need to make sure you have some flame heal uh, or flame herb i believe i'm calling them for my game uh ready to go uh so yeah uh hopefully um this is interesting this has interested you a little bit if it has hit that subscribe button and um you'll be kept up to date with all the stuff going on uh, month by month from this point on uh, so let's enter the actual battle itself. Uh, you have to move to get a battle. Um, you can't just stand still anymore. Uh, so for those veterans that's been following this for a little while, yeah, you have to move around now in order to get this fight. So here we have Maggie. This is our regional bird for the UK. Um, it is going to eventually be... It's wind typing at the moment, but it will be wind metal typing to finish off. Uh, and this is Tail Flame. This is our fire starter. He uh, is just a flame typing, uh, but will become flame earth typing uh, in the end. So let's use a flare just to um, bring its health down enough so that we can hopefully catch it. Oh, I didn't do a lot of damage, did it? Let's, uh, let's try that again. Already has condition. Interesting. Okay, uh, let's try a bash. There we go. And then we're going to capture that. We're going to use one of our normal carts. There we go, and it's caught. Cool. And uh, so again, there's not a lot of actual visual elements in place at the moment, but most of the code is there so that we can um, at least get like the, the ball rolling with the game. Uh, obviously, all animations and um, particle effects and all these sort of F, uh, the VFX side of things will come into the game later on down the line once um, I've had a chance to sort of build more of that up. Let's see if we can find one more creature on Route 1 for us to catch. Let's see what comes up. There we go. And we got Yorkie. There we go. And um, this one is beast typing. So it's just, it, that's kind of like the normal equivalent for our game. Um, let's try a flare again see if we can burn it at the end of the moves it didn't burn okay fine let's just do a bash there we go and we're gonna do that one more time oh did I do it no I didn't I didn't click on it there we go and we should be able to capture ourselves a Yorkie and as you can see the amount of normal cartridges we have in the fight is slowly going down um, so again We've already got all that set up, so now you're using inventory quantities and things like that. So we now have a Yorkie and a Maggie, and we have Tailflame. So if we go into our party, we can see all of those in there now and their levels, how much XP we've got, um, and things like that. Eventually, as I say, we'll be able to do it so that we can see all the different stats it has and swap in and out moves and things like that. Uh, as you can see, they've got Peck, um, and we've got Bark and Bash at the moment. So as we level up, we'll gain more moves and things like that as well. So uh, we can also move these around now um, freely. We also have, if we close that down now, this is a temporary button implement. Obviously, I will add it so that you have to go to a location to put creatures back in your box. Um, but if we take Yorkie, we put him into our kind of into our hand, if you will, and then we plonk him into the box and we can swap him out for Maggie and put Maggie in the box if we'd rather. And at the moment we have three boxes, but that will uh, increase uh, before the release of the game. So let's pop uh, Maggie back in there and uh, we can close it down and that's done. Um, the only other thing I need to add for the storage boxes is just um, when we close the box down, once it's in a fixed location, if there's something in that stored value it gets just added back into um the the boxes but uh yeah it's looking pretty good so far i'm really happy with the progress hopefully you guys uh, are a little bit excited for it uh hopefully it's piqued your interests uh if it has uh hit that subscribe button uh, i will be doing monthly dev um 
sort of updates on this game. So hopefully every, each time you come back every month, you'll see uh, almost a totally different game um, and uh, a, a much more fleshed out game month on month. So um, yeah, thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you next time. Much love. Take care. Bye.